we um, we really wanted to start just by saying that this is um, a, an incredible precinct um, opportunity that we that we were given here to create a real um, engagement with a site that was um, kind of left over around an existing um, commercial building, um, which created opportunities for us to to do a few a few different things, both on the ground plane and also in the sky. Um, there's two towers planned eventually. Um, and this presentation is for the first tower, which is the one that's obviously been built. Um, it's a collaboration between Fender Cats Leaders and Cox Architecture. We were more than delighted to work with Cox. We, we both share very similar, um, similar ideas and, and themes around um, what we do with our buildings. Um, we, we love working um, together. Um, and we had an incredible um, time working on this one together. And the, um, the opportunity here, obviously, to uh, further pursue the idea of high density living in the city and how that can be a wonderful experience for not just the residents within the building, but for the people in that part of the city or visiting that part of the city and how it could improve, improve the city and, uh, and, and be a great uh, positive contribution to the urban um, experience. Yes, yeah, so it was very much a shared vision. Um, we, we worked together collaboratively. We were given kind of pieces to work on together. Um, Fender Cats Leaders took on the tower component and um, Cox took on the, um, the podium and basement levels. So we really think about these buildings um, on three different ways or three key different ways, which is the way that they uh, create their presence on the skyline the way that they contribute to the neighbourhood and the existing precincts around them on that first kind of vital 25 metres. And then of course, the ground plane, the vibrancy of that ground plane, the connections that we can create with that ground plane and moments that we can also create um, along the street and also um, on this site um, within, within the site. So for the tower itself, we, uh, we, we came up with an idea where we were keen to move away from, and so this is something we always try to do, move away from a very deliberate extrusion of a building. Once you work out a floor plate, it's very easy just to take that all the way to the top. We wanted to create something which had shoulders, moments that step, so that the tower can become a more slender form as it ascends up into the sky. And then of course, it became important to think about that, not just for one tower, but for two, and the relationship that those two towers have together in the skyline. And um, the sculpture there from Kevin Francis face off uh, really shows that quite, quite clearly. Uh, all about that public realm, about um, creating a precinct that knits itself back into the city so that the, the, we've got a large site. Um, that site before was completely closed off. Now it has laneways and life and activity running all the way through it. So uh, that is, we see as benefits the city and that can be achieved because we have a yield above to pay for it really. Then um, those apartments above um, provide a, a population for activating that lower ground um, areas. So there's a, a ready-made population that can, can use the cafes and can use the amenities um, on those lower levels, as well as benefiting those that don't just live in the building. Um, but then for those that live in the building, it's about providing little moments um, beyond just a wonderful apartment with great views. They also get areas to meet their neighbours and socialise and have larger groups. And I think that then gives you the flexibility of not only your privacy and your private space, but enables you and affords you the ability to have larger groups and mix with larger people. And that provides the infrastructure, which we feel creates a community. And so that these buildings become very, very social spaces. They, you know, they end up um, having card groups and dog walking groups and jogging groups. And all of that happens um, with, with that infrastructure that's provided to enable that. Just with the communal facilities, was the design team involved in developing that brief in terms of the nature and character of those spaces? Yeah, very, very much so. So um, the first is just how much you should have. And there's a lot of experience with towers that we had before about the appropriate sort of square metre or number of amenities that you might have, but also the opportunities in um, 
in providing some of those amenities at higher levels, up on level 51 and 52, which you can just see is that sort of second step from the top in this image, um, that even if you have an apartment which is perhaps lower down with restricted views, um, you can still use those upper levels and um, and, and partake of those mm. of those great views. And I think um, it was about you know research done in the buildings that have been. Um, completed before this about what amenities were really used, what were the popular ones, and um, and then using that information and talking with the client and putting that into into this building. Yeah, uh, some of them came from the client brief as well. They were particularly keen to include a, a mahjong room, um, which we have in the podium, um, and um, some of the key ideas too um, for the interiors were developed with um, with Hecker Guthrie. We should mention oh, as well okay. as part of yep. the, the team. Yes, sure. uh, and Gary Emery did the signage and, um, and and some of the branding as well, which mm. you'll see on the site, which was an, an awesome experience. One of one of Gary's last projects. 